welcome to our live event that we're going to talk about PPAs. We have this awesome opportunity to bring in Seth Devi, our president of our of Green Day Power. And um, I mean, he's been in the industry for what, 15 years, 16? 12, 12 years in solar and 16 in construction. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to be with everybody today. And yeah, my background is uh specifically in construction and in construction sales and so i uh i grew up in a home where my dad built houses and and uh spent my life in the the trenches up in oregon building homes and uh doing concrete and uh framing houses and then i got into the door door sales realm and uh back in 2007 and got into solar in 2012. and so i built uh, built sales teams and started green down state years ago and we have and just over 100 employees, three offices across the state. And Seth, who was your first employee? And Todd was our first employee. So I met Todd, worked at no, a movie No, I'll tell you. Theater. Yeah, I worked at a movie theater <laughs> and Seth loves movies. So he happened to be my friend because I got him into free movies. And then he convinced me to start selling and we haven't looked back since. Um, I'm pretty excited, guys, to have Seth here because, I mean, I learned all my sales techniques from Seth. I made him better, but I learned all the, the basics from him. So... Uh, PPA was a hard pill for me to swallow in the beginning until I fully understand it. And I think that's going to be the pro what our, our goal today is, is to really talk about what are the pros and cons of, of PPAs, because yeah. people think PPAs are leases and they're very different and they get scared. But in essence, you already lease your power right now. You lease them for PG&E and yeah. the other one. So what we want to do is go over the pros and cons. I haven't sold a ton of leases. Um, I sell ownership a lot, but that's just because that's how I was taught. Yeah. But leases have their place in our, or excuse me, PPAs have their place in our yeah. industry. Um, well, that's what I started in. So I started in solar just in 12 and we sold uh, the Sunrun PPA. And uh, again, I've been in solar so long that the the tier one and tier two for pg e were 11 and 13 cents. And so we didn't even sell 100% offsets because we're selling PPAs at 15, 18 cents. And they didn't do 100% offset back then, we right? Tier shaving because the two tiers were so. And they had low. rules at that time. It's crazy how much it changed. But you know, it, it, you know, that was the really the beginnings of you know Sunburn rolling out that PPA was industry changing. I mean, it changed the industry because you pitch a rate. People are used to paying a rate, and uh, that's what they're accustomed to. Is your bill is thousand kilowatts at 30 cents. You know, it's yeah, true. Three thousand bucks, you know, three hundred bucks. That's like that's how you do it. And so they're used to paying monthly. They're used to looking at it that way. And, uh, you know, share, sharing with somebody a fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 loan for a lot of people, the current interest rates can be pretty scary too. So a lot of this is spurred by NIM 3.0 guys. Like this is yeah, the is moving back from, you know, from ownership more towards PPAs or, you know, or at least that, at least a healthy mix. And so we're going to walk through some of the, you know, some questions and advantages and just how to pitch this and why I like PPAs is it's a simpler offering. And uh, it's just helping people understand that they can save money by paying a lower rate on their electricity. Uh, and that's really it. You're just talking about buying power. A uh, power purchase agreement is what a PPA is. It's a power purchase agreement. You're buying power. And I like to tell people you're putting the panels on your roof and you're buying power from yourself. Uh, and, and, you know, help them understand what, what a PPA truly is and how simple it truly is. So if you were going to tell a client, what a PPA is. I'm I'm the new buyer. What yeah. what is what is a PPA? Well, I heard about these leases. They're scary. I don't own it. It's hard to sell the house. Why would I go in that direction? What what would you tell a client? So that's that what I'm So with a client, I pull out their bill and I said, I'd say, hey, Todd, here's your bill. And that's okay. why I love walking through the bill when you're selling a PPA. Yeah. This and is so I'm gonna say it's a power purchase agreement. Let's look what you're paying for your power currently. Okay. And I'm gonna walk you through your bill. Here's tier one, here's tier two, here's when you're hitting peak hours. And I'll walk them through. You're paying X amount, of, you know, per you know, per cents. You're paying twenty cents this time, fifty cents this time, whatever it is, whatever you know, jurisdiction or utility you're in. And you're gonna walk through their bill. Okay. And just say this is what you're paying. Show them some of the charges. That's my favorite part too. Is all this junk? You know, you see the junk page where it's on pages from commissioning and all that. So you walk through their bill and you just circle and you say, what if instead of paying forty or fifty cents a kilowatt hour, you could pay twenty cents. Okay. Okay. Twenty one. I'm like, so you're you don't have to hide the number. Like you guys know when you're selling a loan, you don't walk in the house in five minutes and say it's a sixty thousand dollar loan because they're gonna all they're gonna get is that sixty thousand dollars in their head. Um, you have to sit there and you you pitch ownership a little differently. You want to pitch a lot of value. I start talking rate right out of the gate. I start giving them an idea of what the rate is going to be with their solar system. 
because it's that simple. And I'm like, you know, if you're if you're 50 cents and you're going to pay 25 cents, your bill's going to be half yeah, the cost, which is better. And uh, yeah, it's just I keep I just jump right into rate and show them other bill and show them kind of how solar is going to work. You're going to pay a cheaper rate, but you get to you get a choice. The big thing is people want to know, and I'm, I even say that I say you get to say no to me if you don't want to do it today. Yeah, you get a choice, so you can choose to pay less or choose to pay more. And that's it. You're just trying to get in their head that this is so simple. They're either choosing to pay less for their power or more. So one of the things that we also have to deal with when I'm selling PPAs is we have to also sell the increase every year. Yeah. And I think that this, they get scared because the increase, oh my gosh, this increase. And um, I don't know about you, but when I'm pitching that, I, I kind of tell people like, look, at least this increase is on paper and it never changes because PG&E, they do. I mean, what are we at? Two more increases next year, 2023. So I, I take this as at least I know what the increase is. I've never had trouble doing the increase personally. I don't know. How, what's your yeah. experience? I've never personally had a big experience with the, I mean, what are they normally? 2.9, 3.9 yeah. percent? Well, increase? you just say it's like you said, you're again, they need to choose it. Yeah. They know what the bill is going to be this year and next year and the next 25 years. So the cool part is I use the proposal where you go down and you say, hey, here's your bill next year. So yeah, it's 145. Next year it's going to be 152. Okay. Or whatever it is. But I'm saying you still need to choose that and it can't go out more. And so you're choosing what your rate is now and what your rate is going to be in the future. And if you still empower them and say, hey, it goes up a little bit to cover inflation. Yeah. Um, but then you dive into the value. You're going to get 25 year warranty. It's bumper to bumper. They insure the system and they monitor the system. Probably yeah, number yeah. one. Guys, uh, for those of you who've been in solar for a long time, your solar engine inverter goes down. You are what you know, something goes wrong in the system where the system shuts off. Yeah. And if the, the homeowner isn't paying attention or for some reason the notification goes to spam and you know they call you six months later and they're like, Hey, my system's been down. Uh, I've got this big huge truck bill. That monitoring you you because it's third party ownership, it's a TPO product. TPO just if you guys are new, if not, but it's third party ownership. Uh that means there's a third party looking at it 24 seven, monitoring it for 24 seven and making sure if the homeowner, if something goes wrong with the system, they're getting somebody out there, communicating to somebody, go out and fix it right away. And so you literally have that, that insulation of insurance and monitoring and warranties to back you. And I think it gives a lot of peace of mind to a homeowner where they're saving money and they don't have to know solar really well to be able to take care of their system and yeah. really make sure it's still right. And it's got multiple levels of warranty. I also really like PPAs for that. So you also have whoever the PPA provider is, uh, Sonova, Sunrun, or our new Paul Meadows uh, PPA. These have levels so that, you know, you have the Green Day Power 25 year or whatever warranty you set up and you have them. So I like that multiple layer of warranties with a PPA. Um, it, it's really good. Um, I didn't want to jump into it. Should we do get, do we want to answer a question right now? Do we have any? Oh, got it. <laughs> Green Day Pest Control just emailed me. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. So we've answered what, uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, uh, I've got one here. Why is there equipment price difference with PPAs? That's a good question. So, um, uh, Seth, why don't you kind of explain that it's, it has to, it comes down to our cost, right? Like, like, uh, I know for instance, like batteries are cheaper for sun run. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Um, so yeah, a little, a little bit of that has to do with their warranty systems because they are warranting everything longer. Like, so PPA is again, one of the other benefits is your battery has a, a longer warranty on it. Um, and some of the, again, the, the pricing differences are a little more back end work. Are you talking about specifically like they're being, I'm going to take, I don't know exactly what the question, but I'm going to take it as like, for instance, our batteries are cheaper. I'm going to Sunrun also because they're such a big company, um, uh, just because there is a big company, yeah. they have a little bit more buying power than us. Yeah. So a lot of times when oh, we yeah. get lower battery prices with Sunrun, with like Sunrun, like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been a while, but like our adder sheet, it's cheaper to do, to go through Sunrun. Well, the Sunrun cheaper is because they ha are able to buy huge amounts of battery and negotiate those battery prices lower. Yeah. Um, I know I've, I've made a couple of mistakes where I've done Sunrun pricing and I have to eat the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that's um, true. yeah they're able to let like their, their procurement teams oh. are, I mean, they're back at a level that's, that's way, way higher. We got uh, a great question here. Is there an escalator on PPAs? The, um, the cool thing about most of our PPA options is you can choose the escalator. Yeah. So you can do a no escalator, but that's going to push up your price per watt. Sometimes that's easier. Like you guys know, customer, it's customer, customer. For some customers, just having 
the fixed price with no, no, you know, no escalator makes them feel good. Makes them feel good, even though the rate's higher. They just they need that thought that nothing's going to change. Yeah, you know, sometimes for somebody that just doesn't understand it as well, that's a way to keep it simpler. Anybody that else understands it, well, they actually know, realize for the first ten years, twelve years, they save more money if they do it with an escalator. And I've done a calculation on that. It takes about I'd say seven to eleven years for your current PPA cost to uh, catch back up to the actual what you're paying. Yeah. And that's if pg &E never really went up. Yeah. So that's a great question. And we do have, what do we, I, I mean, it depends on the system that we have yeah, options. You can do zero, zero some of them. 9, 1. 9, I guess that depends. Yeah. 3.5 or 3.9 depending on the PPA right. provider. Um, yeah, one of the, again, there's a, uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find. Well, let's do the equipment one too. So yeah, each, each, each finance company, whether it's ownership or PPAs, well, if they have an ADL, which is their their approved vendor list, um, and they have different pro products that don't approve them, and they won't approve. Uh, and so, even if it's a tier one product, it could be there could be a tier one and they're not, they don't approve on their ABL. So sometimes, why the equipment is different? That was one of the questions. So it's I guess I should read the question first. Um, I don't see the same equipment in Snowba as the Adder Sheet. And so on Snova or Sunrun or Paul Meadows uh, PPA ABL, that's approved vendor list, they may not approve one panel over the other. They might have specific inverters or batteries that they approve and others they don't. So we have to go by those ABLs and they're different per financier. Mosaics is different. They're all different. So we try to keep it simple. It's okay. sometimes just not simple. That. Um, I got another question. How big are the battery need? Can you read that? Billy, what do you think that? Just read that for me. Uh, how big are the batteries? Uh, how? Sorry, we're trying to understand the question. How big are the battery need? To inst Could you, whoever wrote that? I was just asking yeah. if we need, how do you size the battery? Specific? Is it how to size the battery? Is that what that's? that's I recommend two batteries. Yeah. Well, sorry, guys, we're trying to yeah. figure out exactly. Um, I, if we're sizing batteries, guys, I really recommend that you go down and you go to our Google or you go to our, um, it's on YouTube, right, Billy? So if you go to our YouTube, uh, me and Tate did a video that really shows a very simple way of how to size your batteries based off of how many kilowatt hours you need uh, for the house. Tate has spent a lot of time making that very simple. His equation is so simple and I thought he couldn't do it. I know, guys, because I was the test dummy. Like literally he went through like six or seven iterations of this formula until I was able to say, yeah. oh, I get it. Well, this is pulled off of data of, of a ton of homes that that weren't weren't using that metering. So it's it's, it's actually data that Tate put together off of, I don't know, probably 25 and 50. Oh my homes. gosh. Yeah. It's real life data though, because basically before systems turned on, before has net metering, he's able to measure how much the home is consuming and what the system was actually producing. So then it would show, okay, X percent of the power needs to be stored in the battery to actually use that and yeah. self-consume that. Guys, remember, I told you this in that video. He's a big nerd. He, that's all he does is listen yeah. to electrical stuff. So this is why I trust. Um, okay. They oh, okay. Okay. What size battery is recommended to install? What size battery is recommended to install one or two batteries? Again, it's determined. Like you guys will have to watch that video. It's yeah, really. Kind of system size. And, system size, and, uh, usage. Um. And again, are we, if we're talking about consumption, which is just dispersing the power throughout the day so that we can hold the, you know, the excess instead of giving it to PG&E because the credits are worth so low now because of the NIM3, um, uh, the equation that we have, and it, very simply, just very simply, remember it's number of kilowatts that they use in a house divided by the number of days, 365 divided in half. Again, go to our video and that we can go into depths, but that's our real, real basics. Um, uh, if you're using a battery, can you use less panels? Ooh, that's a good question. So I, I mean, I don't but, think so. No, what, no. So, I mean, you still, you're even, yeah, you still, I mean, the concept is you're trying to cover, you know, hundred percent of their, of their usage and their, their bill offset. If you can, you get as close to covering that. And so, no, I mean, adding the batteries means you're taking, you know, energy and storing the battery and reusing that later. And so it doesn't, and it depends what it's charging the battery. So it definitely doesn't doesn't reduce the amount you'll need. I get this I mean, question. Unless, uh, again, and that's, they're talking about offsetting, trying to do, you know, some people are like, oh, if you go 200%, you cannot use a battery. So obviously. I mean, I think this is, if this question more has to do with adding batteries to current system who have true ups who don't want to be pushed out of NIM2, the answer is no. And this is why I had a long conversation with a client of mine. 
if you're under the net energy metering 2.0 and you have a true bill and you think a battery might help you lower that true bill, it's it doesn't matter because what the battery is doing is holding power and dispensing it. Well, you have a battery. It's called pg e if you're in NIM2. They are, in essence, the battery. You're pushing yeah. power. You're getting credit for it. So you guys got to remember that, that if we're talking there's, about two. There's some like SCE, like wasn't giving us, there's certain peak times weren't giving dollar for dollar. Yeah, it's and true. You could still be covering 100% of the usage, but not 100% of their bill. It's true. It's just a, t so it's it a still help a little bit. Um, but it, again, it's when your system is producing, when you're using your energy and when the bat, like when you can put the question. battery. This so a, a lot of these guys, that's why, that's why solar posted in 3.0, it's not more complicated, but you just have to. You have to sit down with the customer and figure out when are they using their power and figure out the orientation of the solar panels, east, west, and south, and then figure out what what they need based off all that information. So it's just we're truly we're truly solar consultants, guys. We're energy consultants. So we actually got to dive in and look at their energy and not just yeah, just do a quick design and kick them a number. You actually got to analyze how their home is. If you want to be successful. I mean, if you want to be a long-term salesman, you really got to be a consultant and not just a salesman. That's a great, great yeah. thing. So I got another one. How important is the micro inverters are compatible with batteries? I, I hope you're asking what micro inverter systems yeah. are compatible. Theoretically, um, we can use the end phase. We, we like the micro end phase system should be with the end phase battery. Yeah. Technically, you could do micro inverters with... Um, uh with the teslas yeah they're having some issues though from an installation standpoint of the uh iq8 plus working well with tesla yeah so i so it works better you know on solar edge we do solar edge and solar edge better battery or solar the, with the tesla yeah we really but, like again the same yeah. thing in our video is we really like the after of the tesla being if you're if you have an older system but that might be a question we wait and ask tate for yeah. that's a good tate question but i would say yeah tate i mean this is from tate uh IQ seven pluses. So to, to your point, yeah. the system that was installed before does function well with the Tesla. That's class. Yes, it's anything. For some reason, the IQ eight plus, the current uh, micro inverter we're using, it's doesn't compare well. It doesn't communicate well. And we're having a lot of issues with it. So if you're selling, don't try to sell the IQ eight with the Tesla. That's what I'm saying to be crystal clear. We're saying sell in phase with that phase, solar edge or solar edge or solar edge and Tesla. If you yeah, want to I would agree. Now. Um, and, uh, yeah, keep the Tesla IQ8 pluses away. But if you have a, you know, dated customer going back and selling the battery, IQ7 pluses with the Tesla. Yeah, I just did that one. Yeah, it's a good one. Good that's good, that's a good, good question. Good questions. We're getting a lot of good questions. Let me yeah. go back to our, um, oh, here we go. Um, how do we find out other training videos? I just, let me, let me tell you where those are. Uh, our training videos are on, uh, YouTube, uh, Billy, where else are they are? Just on, most of them are on YouTube, right? Uh, our training videos are on YouTube. They're also in the dealer third party Google Drive. Oh, yeah. Which, guys, um, as a salesman, um, remember me personally, I just sell. Like, that's what I do. I don't do anything else besides these videos and sell. When I'm selling these systems, I have my Google Drive up with all of my documents so that I can refer to it in it. So if I have to talk about my, if I need my ad or list, I grab it, or if I need my dealer cheat sheet, for my um, financing, I can grab it. So it yeah. should be in a habit of always having that up. And remember, they're updated constantly. So you can't you can't pull the documents and save them on your computer. Yeah. You've got to have it up so it's updated. Yeah, I think guys, make sure you don't underutilize the dealer drive. Like we get questions that are literally like on there yeah. all the time. Just go to the Google Drive. It's on there. How many people are on right now, Billy? Uh, right now there's 10, but we've okay. broken into 16. People. Okay. Yeah, so guys, the other thing is, there's two questions here, like basically, how do I use Sonova and how do I use Sunrun? And so posing a question, you guys just get back to Billy, but I mean, again, these, these, this, this podcast is great, but do we want to do, I feel like people need training on Sonova, Sunrun, and, and also the, the Palmetto new PPA light reach. So there's actually Palmetto just rolled out a new PPA. Um, it is our parent company as well, light reach. And so we have uh, special pricing uh, for our dealers and for anybody that works directly with Green Day. And so great pricing. Uh, oh, cool. Seth showed it to yeah. me the other day. I thought it was pretty. So the question pretty... that everybody keep in mind and communicate this back to Billy is, do you all just want Sonova Sunrun and Light Reach Palmetto PBA training? And if you do, let's just, let's dive into this and start getting some training. I, I feel like to have two of the questions, you'd be like, how do I do Sonova and how do I do Sunrun? <laughs> just means people don't know. And we are, we're more than happy. Our assumption is that people already had a good gauge of how to use those systems and tools in those products. And if you don't, Let's dive into them. Let's let's get you guys on your training. So, and to break in here, we will be doing on the 29th a webinar with Solar Edge. Oh, awesome! 
to go in deeper into doing the battery things. Yeah. But okay. Uh, yeah, we'll we don't do so well. He's asking. And so. Yeah. So He's asking the right I think the question is is some is, is there some of ownership? Do we have some of ownership? I thought we only had their PPA. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know if that was specific. Well, the the the, the yeah. question is a little we'll we'll dive into that one. I'm not sure the answer on that one. Yes, someone.com. We can use someone, but we need access to a dealer partner. Maybe they're just talking about comparing pricing. Like, I know that maybe they're not able to do quotes with Sunra. So uh, well, I'll refer that last question that was sent. Well, Billy and I can look into that one. I'm yeah, not sure exactly. Out. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um, so let's go to the other one. Oh, back there. So, let me go here. Um Oh, if you guys are having trouble, uh, I have one question here. How come I don't see the newsletter? So I had the same issue with my newsletter. Um, sometimes it can get hit to the spam program. Um, so if, if you're not getting a dealer letter, because they come, you know, how often they come? They come pretty, I mean. The newsletters, I, lately I've been doing them like three times. Oh, okay, so we're getting them. If you're not getting newsletters about upcoming products and stuff like that, um, it's it's probably has to do with your spam folder and how it's being sent to you. I had that yeah. same issue. And I don't know if you guys know, Billy and I are in the same office. So Billy will be like, hey, did you get that newsletter? I'm like, no. And so it, it, we, we, that's just wanna, like- You want to get them. You need to make sure that those are coming through. So uh, check your spam folder. And uh, again, Billy's pretty technically sound. So if you need your point of contact for, for fixing that, I would contact uh, Billy directly. Yeah. And then same thing with the, where do I find the adder sheet? Same thing. Google drive guys. Everything should be Google drive. Oh, when is PPA training? Uh, they asked PPA training for Palmettos. Yeah. Uh, dealer point of contact now would be uh, Anthony uh, Junta and Billy as well. And so we'll make sure uh, we'll we did have a change just to add it. Uh, Pete Waters was uh, over the dealer program. He's not here anymore. Um, and so, yeah, Anthony uh, Junta is the new sales director of the dealer program uh, with support from Billy. And then they have Shauna still and all the dealer support team that we be just connected with. But, yeah, there's, uh, there's lots of people. Yeah, let's make sure you guys have the contact there. When is Paul Middle PPA training? So um, it just rolled out. So we're still yeah, working. We just launched it in the next week just internally for a couple of people. And then we'll be actively launching it to all dealers here probably in the next week or two. Yeah, we're trying real hard. We just, we want to roll out the kinks. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I get to try it out, guys. And I get to deal with all the mistakes so that you guys don't have to. So yeah, but that's going to be really good. Pricing is really aggressive. I, I liked the pricing. It was pretty easy. So no, but... the, the, the. What's it called? The uh, the interface is really good. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was pretty good, and I'm pretty skeptical, and I don't like change. So yeah. So if you guys would actively use the Palmetto PPA too, let's let's get anybody that wants to use it trained. We'll try to set that, uh, up. and then we'll share with you know kind of share with you guys how it works and how to price everything. So, uh, but yeah, pricing. We were impressed with the pricing. It came through very very strong. Very strong. And it coincides with our stuff. So it'll coincide with solo and, and some yeah. other really cool stuff. So we don't have yeah, to have too... solo integration with it that we just set up. So you'll actually get to access it through solo. You won't have to go direct to the portal, to the uh, light reach portal, Palmetto portal. You'll be able to use it through solo, which is really cool because we don't have that currently set up with Sunrun or Sonoma. But we're working uh, on it. Yeah. So I just like that it's internal. Yeah. Um, it means that when there's issues that come up, you know, Seth talks with the owner and yeah. the CEO of Palmetto. So I, I just love the fact that we can call and we are, since we are, a parent, they're our parent company, they want us to succeed more, probably more than everybody else. So yeah. I like that as a person, as you guys know, I think customer service is everything. I'd rather go with a company that has good customer service. Yeah. I'm not saying the other ones don't, but it's nice to be kind of the, the, the top yeah. tier of, of the so PPA. The, yeah. The cool thing is we'll roll out, we got a cool incentive rolling out with the uh, PPA too. So make sure guys, Spread the word and, and Billy as well in the newsletter that when we do the P, the, the PPA training for Palmetto, that be on that call because we're going to roll out an incentive as well to everybody on that call. To try to push that, yeah. So, and then also be patient. It's new, guys. So, as we're yeah. rolling it out, we're doing it and uh, all that stuff. Okay, cool. So, um, I think we've hit pretty much I wanted to talk about PPAs, um, pros and cons. Again, to recap, guys, PPAs are a great option. They've got really good warranties. It's easier to sell because you're just selling rates. Um, we have a lot of PPA options. Um, battery uh, uh, battery warranty is longer than our normal yeah. standard warranty, and it's for people who don't want to go into debt uh, yeah. very far. 
it's like and I, you know it's a it's like a customer protection program to you guys because it customers feel a lot safer they still have that option after five years that they could own it yeah so i used to tell people hey this is your this is your options program you you get to start with this if you want to own it down the, the the line you still have that you can't if you go and buy a system you can't decide you want to switch to a ppa and get better warranties and all the monitoring afterwards you can't go backwards yeah. so i'm like start here and then you can have the you know if you're like, they're like i want to do ownership I'm like great ownership's great after five years you can buy it if you'd like or you can stick with this program yeah so it's a flexible it's a flexible program um better customer uh, protections and uh peace of mind and yeah, it's a great program. We'll we'll do more trainings coming up soon. Yep. Um Bob Billy announced that. Yeah, we'll announce that. So remember, guys, next week we're gonna do one of these with Tate. So uh save all your technical questions for Tate for next year or next year, next <laughs> next week. Um uh Tate's always good as long as we don't as long as we keep them focused, guys. Yeah. Uh, uh but I wanted to thank Seth for coming on to our uh, stuff. Yeah, be here, guys. Thank you. I'll I'll try to get all these more often. And uh you know, yeah, love to no, some more knowledge when we can. And don't for sure, forget to subscribe to Yep, That's Talk. Yes, I get to plug it since I don't get to yeah, get a plug. I didn't need to get a plug. Um, I don't think, <laughs> yeah, any, guys, anything you want us to train on, send a billing. That'd be my big thing. Uh, I, I was surprised how much training people wanted on PPA. So I'm really looking forward to setting these up with Todd and the team and Anthony and Billy to get you guys rocking and rolling on PPAs. All right, perfect. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. All right, take care. Bye. Are we done?